providing computational tools and computers of approximately rupees 10 lakhs for performing computational research in chemistry. We are indeed very grateful to this Ibaraki University. So I kindly request Ms. Ashina Kikuchi and Professor Purnakala Saman to initiate the proceedings of signing and exchange of MEUs. Welcome you all for this prestigious international conference, Green Energy, Powering a Sustainable Future, organized by our college in collaboration with esteem Ibaraki University, Japan. This conference is a significant milestone for us as it is brings together leading minds from academia and research institutions uh, to bring together uh, and discuss one of the important challenges, green and sustainable energy. The partnership with Ibaraki University has added immense value to this event. I am specially pleased that today we will be formally uh, our collaboration with Ibaraki University through a signing and exchange of memorandum of understanding. This partnership is a symbol of our shared commitment for advancing research, knowledge and innovation in the realm of chemical sciences and I sincerely thank our colleague from Japan and Ibaraki University for their contribution and support. Our theme, Green Energy, Powering the Sustainable Future is not just a discussion topic, it is a vision, a responsibility and a commitment for future generations. In the present world scenario, green and sustainable energy is a dream that we have to pursue as a need of the hour. The transition from fossil fuel to renewable energy, efficient carbon recycling, limiting greenhouse emissions, etc. will determine the health of our planet that has direct link to our economics and well-being of our society. As the principal of Government College Kandola, I am filled with excitement to host this conference at a time when the world is standing at a crucial juncture where the challenges of climate change, energy security and environmental sustainability are more demanding than ever. The conference brings together brilliant minds from across disciplines offering an opportunity to learn from each other and analyze the problems with a multidisciplinary and holistic approach. In these two days, we will witness confluence of knowledge that aims to push the boundaries of what is possible in the field of green and sustainable energy. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to our distinguished speakers and the participants who have come from the near and far contribute to their important dialogue. I also wish to thank the convener of this conference, Dr. Sajik Taparak, for her initiatives in shouldering the responsibility along with the faculty members of her Department of Chemistry and the students who have worked relentlessly with the dedication to bring the conference into a uh, fruitful. seminar or symposium on the next two days. I'll just try to highlight some things which uh, I'm a novice actually eh? because this is not my sector but I just try to run through Google which is our encyclopedia and uh, try to gain some insight into it and let me see if I can just throw some light on it. 
is the title is green energy powering a sustainable future now green is known for many many years you know we had green chemistry we had green energy a lot of things green was already there in the recent past with the fund i mean uh, sustainable goals coming from the un and uh, other things sustainability is now become a main focus so whatever you do so you got a tag uh, line now which has to be sustainable now what does this really mean for the researcher it's very important because even from a chemistry point we say we are doing green chemistry today then and everyone is happy say 10 years back that you are doing great chemistry great work great work excellent but today the question is they ask you is it sustainable and you start thinking now what is that term sustainable what to do with green so green is also known as renewable energy it is derived from natural sources i mean the fossil fuels are natural sources but this is a renewable form of energy which is given free by nature and it can be constantly replenished we as a world as a universe as we advance in technology and scientific innovation and but the demands of energy are ever increasing it doesn't decrease with our scientific endeavors and technology push and innovation the demand for energy is growing day by day and that is becoming challenging how to provide such energy to a vast population which itself is growing and you need that energy for it and that energy has to come by sustaining the world and its environment now what are the benefits you think of green energy is environmental protection it's a security for the future it uh, supports economic growth it can be coming at a lower price so you have sustainability there and it requires a lot of technological innovation it can support if you have suffi sufficient energy sources we all know it is uh, solar the sun is bright and shining and we can tap into it we have wind we have the hydroelectric powers all these are there for many many years but they have limitations they have challenges and they are not easy and accessible to everyone across the globe and every country across the globe uh, countries which are rich in rivers and uh, water can tap into hydroelectric power countries which have lot of wind you can say or oh, a windy terrain mountainous i think we tap a lot in india also across our western ghats the wind energy to supply but it is a very expensive thing and not at a scale which is really required to support the growth and economy of a country and its demands so these are the challenges for the young researchers today how do we really make this uh, translating into a large uh, capacity so it can be utilized by one and all the same thing with solar solar cells science has been evolving over decades and decades but the limitations of that science it's still a limiting factor for its wide uh, i mean wide usage across all streams where energy is required the other small things are geothermal you have the oceans and the waves where science is scientists are working on how to tap the energy and then so all these things combined make research in clean energy which is sustainable a very interesting topic because this is what is going to drive future of growth future of development and future of the world becoming cleaner greener and more tech, uh, sustainable by itself and i think over the past next two days uh, a lot of deliberations will happen on this topic and uh, a lot of insights and this collaboration will take a pointers from this discussions to drive forth innovation and get in new thoughts ideas on what change can really take place to help this be a reality in the coming future now what do you think would be the benefits if this really happens it will reduce green of green house emissions and we all as countries even india has pledged by 2070 we will try to reduce green house by almost zero we heard japan has by is almost reducing by 50% by 2030 every country has this aspiration to reduce green house and this is one of the key drivers of clean energy which is sustainable to be one major factor which can reduce your green house emissions because uh, important milestone has uh, come to fruition i think after a journey
and congratulations to Dhaka University and the Government College for this uh, milestone and uh, we really look forward uh, to great uh, results and uh, contributions to implement of, uh, I would say, uh, the energy crisis which the world is face, uh, facing today and how we can shape it going forward. So it's a great milestone and once again congratulations to everyone here, the senior faculty from Ibraka University and uh, the Government College. Really proud to be amongst this uh, for this event here. Thank you very much. The international conference is on energy consumption. As you know, we significantly impact the sustainability of our resources. And the whole world must put focus on energy sustainability, considering the current energy demand uh, without compromising the need of the future. Also, energy security at an acceptable cost is of prime importance to avoid the negative impact on the environment and also economy and the society. So the next two days, you will explore our latest development and advances in sustainable materials and processes involved in the diverse topic such as energy generation, transmission, distribution and storage, green transformations, etc. through our plenary lectures, invited talks and via oral and post. Uh, warm good morning to everyone present here. It is my great pleasure to read the citation of our special guest, uh, Honorable Professor S. J. Pilre. In reverence and honor of Professor Santosh J. Pilre. On this August occasion, we unite to distill into words what can scarcely be captured in ink. A lifetime of discovery, research and mentorship embodied in two essence of organic chemistry you have left an indelible mark, not just on the academic realm, but on the very molecules themselves. Your mastery of organic synthesis, particularly the elegant art of one-pot synthesis, has read immeasurable equivalents of intellect, dedication, and time you have put into shaping the life. As I stand before you today, accepting this honor. I am thrilled to see so many familiar faces here who have been my students throughout my journey. As I look back, I am reminded of the incredible opportunities I have had, the challenges I have faced and the lessons I have learned. This felicitation is just not a recognition of my achievement but also testament to the tireless efforts of everyone who has supported me along the way. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to my family who has been rock tolerating countless late nights, missed meals, Sacrifice weekends, your love and encouragement have fueled my passion for teaching and research. To my colleagues, I am grateful. Particularly, I would like to mention Professor B. R. Srinivasan. I have learned a lot of inorganic chemistry from him, and Professor late Dr. Kirtani, who used to come every every month with a new idea or sometimes the same idea with new questions. So this stimulating discussions, collaborative research and comrade that have enriched my academic experience, their expertise, feedback and friendship have helped shape my into a scholar I am today. To my students, I am proud of each and every one. Your curiosity, enthusiasm and eagerness to learn have inspired me to innovate, adopt and grow as an educator. I hope that I have made 
and positive effect impact on academic growth journey that you will continue to strive for excellence this felicitation also reminds me of responsibility that comes with achievement academics we have a duty to advance knowledge mentor future generation and contribute to the betterment of the society as i move forward i pledge to continue pushing the boundaries of knowledge fostering a culture of inclusiveness and innovation and inspiring others to pursue their passions i take this occasion to specially thanks professor purnakala i am indeed grateful to you people are so worried about a lot of things and we have a lot of global issue and we have to really collaborate together and india is a such a country who has a diverse and we can learn a lot from you and not only the science but also the culture history and human beings and everything so we really want to improve our collaboration from the scientific and education and learn each other and today after the final on the you uh, we really want to improve our relations so first of all as a brief i would like to introduce about institute of israel university so next week so ibaraki is a regional name so we can see this this kind of images around our area so we have a uh, several, several colleagues in at ibaraki prefect you can see the nature and it was like uh, we have a beautiful nature and also the famous kuba is the home of science city uh, abundant and making regional support tokyo food because we are very close to the big city of tokyo we do have a lot of vegetable vegetation and the food the next please so this is a kind of map of the ibaraki prefecture so you can just come here uh, just 100 km north from tokyo by express train about 1 hour and a half and year of in this year 2024 at Ibaraki University will celebrate its 75 years of anniversary so additionally if we track back to the establishment of the school old day that extend normal school is mark remarks milestone of 150 years as established and Ibaraki University has three campuses and camp and one satellite campuses as shown on the map three map next please so this shows the undergraduate and graduate school structure and in that addition to the five faculties humanities social science education science engineering agriculture and we have open new colleges collaborate we re re uh, stay collaborate with regional innovation which studies students to graduate while earning the salary by working in a company and crossing the boundaries between the humanities and science and primarily in the field of the data science and the businesses so this is the kind of the time we start to educate students not only in an institute but collaborate with the private sector <laughs> next please <coughs> so this is a roughly a total student it up now <coughs> university is approximately 8280 students and totally uh, 854 faculty and staff next please <coughs> so this total number graduate is currently 107800 students next please 
So this map shows the academic exchange agreement <coughs> uh, with 21 countries and universities and colleges. So we are really focused on Asia, as you can see. Next, please. So we have a quality assurance of undergraduate education system. So this involves sur surviving employers about how students have grown at university, uh, at university and beyond <coughs> their specialized, uh, specialized field and how they have changed after the graduation. Next, please. So this is kind of the topic we really want to collaborate together. We have been working at sustainability science before on the SDGs were advocated. So the, at the establishment back to 90, uh, about 100 years ago, we focused on the lake in a region and developed research activities for aquatic system of climate change issues. And we studied education and research of sustainability science at, at the graduate school from the, this April. And our institute, Greg, got an award <coughs> from the Minister of Environment in 2020. Next, please. Our focus research fields the climate adoption and science and also atomic science. And new research center, Clark, for mitigation studies for carbon neutral society Today, we have a professor and doctor in front. They can introduce other research later. And few the recaps have just established for the renewable energy of the atomic science. Next, please. So it's shown a previous diagram in a field of nuclear science at our university. The atomic science education and research center promotes education and research centers around three divisions, radiation, safety, advanced material analysis, and next generation reactor. Japan, we do have the nuclear power plant, and not only <coughs> focus on our energy, we also implement a lot of science and field and research. And also Uh, we've got programs which also allows progression of our students and placement of other students. Uh, the MOUs that we have signed, our various departments in the college have signed MOUs with various organizations.